Hey everybody, thanks for joining me here today. This is Nicole with Topaz, and today we are here to learn about enhancing portrait images with some of the Topaz software in our bundle and the new photo effects lab. So with that, let's go ahead and talk about portrait images. Enhancing different portrait images can be a pretty time intensive and sometimes difficult process, especially if you're not, if you don't have the right tools at your hands. Um, you have to do certain things such as improving skin tone, sometimes removing blemishes or marks on your face or, or toning down some wrinkles, maybe whitening teeth and many other types of things. And usually this is a, more time intensive type of workflow. But with Topaz, we have a lot of tools in our arsenal that will make certain tasks really fast and really easy. So today we're going to talk about just some basic tips when it comes to post processing your portrait imagery. And we're also going to go through a couple more extended workflows to go through the whole process. So today we're going to start off with one of the workflows. We're going to be working with this first image here. And this is going to be a more subtle workflow. So let's go ahead and show you the before and after, and then we'll go through the different steps. This is the after image, and here's the before. So again, it's going to be a more subtle workflow. There's going to be different types of post-processing sometimes when you're doing a little bit more intensive of fixing blemishes and really um, making some major changes on your portrait imagery. This is really something that people who work with more with models and look more on the stylized type of imagery. And then when it comes to doing more family portraits and children's portraits, you're going to have more subtle types of changes happening. And that's what we're really going to talk about here on this first one. So I'm going to go ahead and go in one-to-one -one and show you this before and after one more time. This is the before and here we have our after. We've enhanced the eyes, we've taken the texture down a little bit on the skin and brought back a lot of that texture, a lot of natural texture, enhanced the skin tone, and a couple other things that we're just going to go over real quick. Let me go ahead and go back to the fit and I'll get rid of all these different layers. I am going to be using Photo Effects Lab as my host here today. I'm getting pretty used to it at this point and it can go through these workflows quite quickly. So that is what we're going to be working with. But you can uh, use any host that you would like for these types of processes. We're, um, our plugins are also compatible with Photoshop, Photoshop Elements, Lightroom, Aperture, iPhoto, uh, PaintShop Pro, and many more. You can look in our website to discuss that. So let's go ahead and just make a duplicate layer of this image. I'm going to come down and just press duplicate down here on the lower right and get myself um, an extra layer. And we're going to go into the first plugin that I think is the most important when it comes to portrait images as far as um, what is in the Topaz lineup of products. And that's going to be Topaz Clean. I'm just going to click on my plugins tab over here and open up Topaz Clean. Topaz Clean is an edge enhancement software and it can really make some uh, very stylized um, cartoon types of looks very flattened um, images and you can get some very interesting um, stylized looks within just the presets. There's only a few over here right now but you can kind of see it's a more artistic type of plugin. However, it also is really good for skin smoothing and detail in edge enhancement for eyelashes and hair and certain things like that. So that's really what we're going to be covering within Clean today. Let me just go to the first preset here, which I want to show you, is the Skin Even preset. Skin Even preset usually does a pretty good job. Sometimes it's a little over the top for certain images, especially if you don't have a lot of blemishes or you don't have um, a lot of issues with the skin, but you just want to kind of smooth it out a little bit. So this preset is a little bit heavy for this image right now, but we're going to go over here to the right and discuss how to tone it back. But I do like to start off with the Skin Even preset if I'm coming in here with the portrait image to work on the skin. Here's before and here's after the preset. So it's definitely going too far for me, especially since we're just doing a subtle adjustment. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just come over to our right hand side of the panel and work with my clean uh, the Clean Adjustment tab is going to basically 
tell the program how much to flatten the image out. So at zero, you're going to have no effect almost. Uh, we do have some texture involved with this particular preset, but when this strength is at zero, nothing else matters because nothing else will start will be occurring. With the skin even presets, it starts out at two, and when it's a little too heavy, I just like to take that down to one and see if that is going to help right away. So now we have before and after. We're still keeping the elements that I wanted within the skin, which is the freckles, a little bit more natural type of feeling. Just, just smoothing everything out a little bit, taking away some of the um, uh, unwanted texture. However, the texture also feels a little bit heavy that we've put into the image. So let me go ahead and open up the texture tab now and take this texture all the way down to zero. And you can see what happens when there's no texture added into this type of uh, strength level at one. Then it just flattens everything out and it becomes, again, we're starting to verge on a cartoon type of look if we just push that strength up a little. But this texture tab really allows you to bring back the original texture of the image in different levels. So you can just start taking this up and you'll see some of that texture just start returning. And you can get really heavy with it and bring back an enhanced level of texture like you're seeing here, or you can get much more natural down in the lower levels of this texture slider. So I'm going down to about uh, 0.2 or so. And I'm going to take that up just a little bit more, maybe 0.25, and actually just a little bit more. I want to have some pores to the skin to get a natural effect. Again, we're not going for a very flat effect. We're going for a more natural. So again, here's before and after. And you'll notice that just with these two sliders, where everything else started out at that skin even preset, just moving that strength and texture slider to where it really works is going to start helping with laugh lines. If you want to take those down a little bit, you can notice on her left eye here, here's before and after, and over here on the other eye, before and after. Just start smoothing and softening everything out. And that's what is nice about this clean program. However, sometimes it doesn't do great things when you're starting out with a softer image, like I am here. This isn't a super detailed image. Here's before and here's after. It's softening up the eyes even a little bit more, putting some unwanted texture and flatness into areas where I don't want that. So that's when we open up one of my favorite tabs, the Edges tab. The Edges tab does amazing things for hair and eyelashes and eyes, really bringing a lot of um, edge detail and enhancement with this. I'm going to leave the radius and the sharpness where they are and just take the accent up. The accent is going to say how much this edge, just the edges, not the skin, not the flatter parts, should start to be enhanced. So as I take this up, I'm just going to take it up all the way to five. I want you to keep an eye on her eyelashes over here on either eye. Here's before and after. We've almost brought back all of the original detail of the eyelashes, so it almost looks like we haven't flattened out this area at all because it's noticing that, wait a minute, this is an edge, I don't need to, when that accent is all the way up, I don't need to affect that. And then if you want to even take that a little bit further and really enhance the hair and the eyelashes, you can come into your sharpness and start moving that up. It's not a normal sharpness slider. You're not going to see any effect within the face or with any of the areas that are smoothing out. But within the edges, you'll start to see they just get a little bit more defined, a little bit more artistic looking as you take that up. So now here's before and after. And you can see that not only have we smoothed out the skin, we've also enhanced the eyes and the eyelashes, which is really important in you know, kind of a key thing within portrait photography. You don't want to soften up the eyes or the lips or anything that ha is supposed to have um, texture there. So I'm pretty happy here. I'm going to work with my radius as well. Um, the radius actually changes how dramatic the edges are going to look, 
when your radius is further down, it's not going to be as dramatic, and as your radius is further up, you'll start to see a little bit more enhancement there. Okay, so I'm pretty happy here, and I'm just going to go ahead and say okay. Get back into our photo effects lab. So let's go ahead and look at the one-to-one. -one. And here's before. A little bit of texture going on that I'm not wanting. A little bit heavier size pores and here's after. It just smooths out and it really makes the eyes stand out quite nicely. I did several other things with that before and after workflow, kind of more tips that I wanted to show you, different ways to enhance, so we'll go over some of those right now. I'm going to go ahead and make a from stack layer, which is going to combine the two layers and give me a new layer that has that combination. So I just have that up here on top now. One of the things that a lot of people ask about is uh, skin tone enhancement. Within a layered type of program, it's very easy to be able to and especially with our edge aware brushes that you can use within the masking tools, it's really easy to just focus on the skin, brush everything out, and then just brush the skin back in at the enhancement that you want it to be. I'm going to go back to fit so we can see our whole image. This image, uh, it looks pretty good, but it looks a little bit washed out, so I wanted to bring back a little bit more of a tanner skin tone a little bit, a little bit darker and a little bit more saturated. So with that, I'm just going to go up to my temperature levels up here, my saturation level, and quickly just add in, just paying attention to the skin and nothing else on the rest of the image, which is going to start to look a little bit crazy. But as I just pay attention to the skin, I can come in and work with it a little. And this is all subjective um, as what you want to do and the amount of processing that you like to do for your portraits, but this is just some tips to give you an idea of how to do it within our programs. So now that I'm just paying attention to the skin, let me show you that before and after. Here's before, here's after. It's pretty subtle, but for everything else it's pretty dramatic. So what I'm going to do is go up to my masks tab and just go ahead and invert my mask and it's going to show up as a black mask, which is going to hide everything we just did. And now I can paint back the areas that I want to paint back without worrying about painting back everything else. The way that I can do that is work with my Edge Aware technology in my brush. The Edge Aware technology basically um, allows uh, this brush to recognize the edges, and it's based on color. So if you have a pretty good contrast of color like we do within this portrait, it's going to be really easy just to brush that back. So what I will do is show you how to do that. The brush value is at 255, which means I'll be brushing a white color onto black, which is great, except I want to go down maybe a little bit, more of a light, very, very, very light gray. I don't want to put it to 100% yet, so I want to see what it looks like first. Then you have brush size. You can see how big your brush is. Just going up and down the slider, it will increase and decrease in size. The hardness is the inner circle that you see going up and down when you take this slider up and down, and that's really going to tell the brush how much it should feather from the center point to the outer point. When it's at one, there will be no feather, it's going to be very hard, circular edge, and when it's at zero, it's going to be very soft, circular edge. So I'll take that up just a little. Then we have flow. Flow, basically, when you're at a lower flow, it's going to be a cumulative type of brush. You can brush one stroke and it'll be a percentage of your brush value. Then you continue brushing another stroke and another and another until you get to the full brush value. So it's a cumulative type brush when you don't want that cumulative and you want everything to be exactly the same um, transparency, you can take that flow all the way up to one, which I do want that right now, and then my edge aware is all the way at one. I want it to be very edge aware. Take my brush size up just a little, and then when you get your brush where you want it, you can just start painting. When you're working with the edge aware, you just have to make sure to keep the crosshairs of your brush on the color you want to affect, and you don't have to worry about the edge of your brush going off into different colors. As long as the crosshairs are on the right area of, that you're trying to work with, then the rest will not be affected. So 
that's really nice. So I can do this without worrying about putting a lot of color or any sort of tone into her eyes and just work around the mouth and not worry about putting any tone or color into her teeth. So this quickly got me a little bit a different of a skin tone. Let me show you here. Here's before and after. So just a little bit more color, a little bit more flesh. Again, here's before and after. And I didn't change anything else, which is a really great thing to have um, when you're working with these brushes. And you can tell just how edge aware it is over here on the right. You can see that we didn't go into her eyes, her mouth, or her hair. So very, very cool stuff there. All right, the last thing that I want to kind of show you with this particular image um, and that people are asked me about a lot is how to enhance the color of eyes without actually enhancing the rest of the image. And there are several programs that you can do that within the program itself. You don't necessarily have to even have a layered program that you're working in. So let's go ahead and take a look at Topaz Adjust because that's one of my favorites. I'm going to go ahead and press another From Stack Layer. Again, what that's going to do is give me a fresh layer on top with all of the adjustments I've already made, all of the masks combined into one new layer. And that's the layer I'm going to take into Topaz Adjust. So if you're not familiar with Topaz Adjust or any of our other plugins, most of our effect plugins like you just saw with Clean and now you're seeing with Topaz Adjust, they have all the presets over here on the left. A lot of our programs have many more presets than others, but um, like Adjust, Black and White Effects, Lens Effects, and the upcoming Simplify have tons of presets. And as we update, we will definitely be adding presets into our program. So as we update clean, we'll get more presets in there for you as well. But within these ones that have tons of presets, we have different collections, uh, more subtle collections, more stylized collections, uh, this type of stuff, not looking great on skin. <laughs> That's another um, thing that people always ask about. They say, you know, how do I make the eyes look really, really bright? but not affect the rest of the image in a negative way. Well, we have something in a few of our programs called local adjustment, so that's what we're going to be talking about here right now. But what I want to do is maybe find a preset that's going to really enhance her eyes with and not focus on how bad it's making the rest of the image look. So that's a trick. You just have to not focus on the rest and just focus on the area that you want to affect. So I want to get into a more vibrant collection Here's before, here's after. Uh, let's go, just trying to grab a couple different things to see which ones look good here. I kind of like this. We'll go ahead and do this boost one. So again, the rest of the image, it doesn't look great on, but her eyes it definitely enhances some things here and brings out a little bit more color and a little bit more detail. Let's go ahead and go in on that. Okay, here's before and after but we definitely don't like it on the rest of the image. So I'm going to go back to fit and go into my local adjustment brushes. The local adjustment brush menu is very similar to the brush menu we just went over in Photo Effects Lab. We have a brush size, we have an opacity, which is basically going to say how transparent the brush should be. We also have hardness and the edge wear technology. And then you have an overall strength as well that is going to be in your dodge, burn, and smooth adjustments. So that means after you've done all of your adjustments, if you don't like what it, if you don't like the level of strength, you can then still come and work with this overall strength without having to brush anymore. So it kind of gives you a little bit, one more edge of control. But with the brush out, you're able to brush out the effect uh, locally, selectively, or brush in if you know how to do it really quickly. I really want to brush in tab, but it's a really quick process to just brush something out, brush the entire effect out, and then selectively brush something in, which we're going to do today. So on the brush out, I'm going to just take my brush size up pretty high, I'm going to take my edge wear all the way down, my hardness pretty high, and my opacity all the way up to one, and I'm just going to brush really quickly over the entire image. So that brings us back to our before. And you can see in our mask thumbnail down here, our little preview, that everything is white now, and we're back to our before image. 
Now I want to brush in just the eyes. So I'm going to go in one to one. And again, this is just a process to really make eyes stand out with color and detail and, and really get um, eyes to, to pop a little bit more. So instead of on the brush outside, um, brush out, I'm going to go to the eraser tool. The eraser tool is going to brush black back in. So I'm going to take my brush eyes really far down because I'm working with a very small area. My hardness is going to go all the way down. I don't want to have hard edges. And my edge aware, surprisingly enough, is going to stay down because you don't want it to look unnatural whenever you're working with bringing eye color back in. You don't want it to have a hard edge against the whites of the eye. It looks a little odd if you do. Um, so to have a more natural feathered edge to your brush is going to give you a more natural effect. So when I have all of this, when I brush it back, it's going to possibly look a little unnatural because it's really strong. But I'll show you what we do after that. So I've just brushed it back into both eyes. Brush that effect back in. Let me show you that. Or actually, here's before. Here's after. So that actually looks pretty good, but it's a little too intense for me. So what I'm going to do is come to my finishing touches where we have a transparency slider. It's very similar to the op opacity slider within uh, Photoshop or Photo Effects Lab. Let me open that up. And you can just take out some of the effects by taking this transparency slider up. And you can take it all out or put it all back in. So I'm going to just take out about 20% to give it a little bit more natural of an effect. And here's before and after. We just got a little bit more of a pop for her eyes. Once you're happy with it, you just say OK. And I'm able to now have an image. Here's before and after. So a very subtle workflow here to get a very natural effect. Now I want to show you a couple tips, and then we'll go over a more extended workflow. Let's jump on into a different image here. Again, one of the top questions I get from people is about how to get that adjust type of look, at, le at least when it comes to portrait images, about how to get that adjusted type of look in the background, but really not have it in the foreground. And we're going to work with that adjust brush out here just a little bit more and a couple more of the local adjustment brushes. But in images like this, you're not necessarily wanting to have any sort of major post-processing. You just want things to pop and you want things to be natural, or at least I would. So if you're in Topaz Adjust, when you have kind of a very dull background like this, you can easily get a very interesting type of look. I'm going to go to the autumn. Oh, that looks nice, but it's a little too much for me. Bold is crazy. And Boost looks really nice. Here's before and after. I've definitely got a lot of color now coming from the background, her clothes, and the tree even. You can definitely see some of that moss growing. Here's before and after. But if you take a closer look at her face, all of a sudden you start to see that it pushes these areas a little too much and it doesn't do very good things for her skin. Here's before and after. So one of my favorite things, because I actually like the coloring on her face, I just don't like all of the kind of added texture it brought in and almost noise-like pixels, I'm actually going to use instead my local adjustment smooth brush. The smooth brush is great. This is great for smoothing out skies if you want to keep the color that you have on the sky and then the detail that you have in your foreground or background, but there's just certain areas like skies or skin that just don't do well with extra added detail. Um, this is a great brush to know about. So this smooth slider is going to allow you to just smooth out the areas. I'm going to leave my brush, or I'm going to take my brush size up a little. My opacity, I'm going to keep pretty, maybe 0.3 or so. My hardness, I'm going to not keep have it very hard, and I'm going to go all the way up with my edge aware. 
So that means I can come again on her face and just smooth out areas. And that actually is not quite enough for me. I'm going to take that or opacity up maybe to about 0.5 and smooth out a little bit more. This might be a little overkill, but at least you guys will be able to see it on the webinar. I'm just going around her face. Again, the trick to these brushes when you are working with edgeware is just to make sure the crosshairs are on the color that you want to affect. And it doesn't matter if your brush goes over into different colors because it won't affect those colors as long as the crosshair is not on them. So let's just continue along here. And it might not be really obvious at first, but I'll show you the before and after and you'll see it just really kept the detail we wanted and kept the skin look without keeping that extra detail we brought in. So now we have this. I'll go a little bit more so you can see it because I'm not sure. This is a little bit too smooth on my screen, but I really want you guys to be able to see how subtle this can be and how great. So now I'm going to take my local adjustment off and you see all of that extra shadow and detail and everything that really got brought in by that preset which does not look very natural on any type of skin and then you were able to take most of it out and smooth everything back up and give her childlike skin <laughs> instead of kind of crazy over processed skin. So that is a trick when it comes to skin and working with adjust and getting those adjusted backgrounds you might want and those really nice bright backgrounds without having to worry about over affecting the skin. Here's before and here's after. Just say OK and process that back. And actually, I'm just going to go ahead and open up our one where we're going to go over more extended, more obvious type of processing. And it's a little heavy-handed, but I'll tell you why. I, no, I don't. It is definitely heavy-handed because I even took out things from her face, such as freckles, natural elements that I didn't have to. And I'll show you how to keep them in versus how to take them out. I was kind of pretending they were blemishes to see um, if I could smooth out her face all the way. Oops, let me show you before and after here. Here is the before and after. So again, this is a little bit more heavy-handed, but again, it's just going to give you an idea of how to do things when you are working with your portrait images. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all of these other layers and get back down to my original layer. And let's go over my workflow for this. Go ahead, delete. All right, now we're back to our original image and I'm going to duplicate. The first thing I noticed when I opened up this image is I really didn't like um, some of the lighting that was happening over here. I thought we could open up the shadows just a little bit. And let me open up the original image. I think we're on a copy here. Delete, delete. File, open. All right, there we go. So I wanted to open up the right side of the face and I wanted to give a little bit more of color to the skin. So very quickly I'm able to do that within Photo Effects Lab. So that was just my process there. And then I masked everything else out. So paying attention only to the skin, not to everything else. I played around with some of the adjustment sliders here, exposure. Uh, took my contrast down a little bit and then took my dynamic slider up. What's great about this is the Dynamics has a much more localized contrast. So you'll notice that the whites of her eyes start to get even brighter and they really start to pop out. And it doesn't, and it gets a much more localized contrast as opposed to uh, a global contrast. So I'm able to still get the contrast in her face, but open up the side of her, uh, the shadows a little bit. And then I took my shadows and just open those up, oops, open those up just a little. Came up into the temperature again and worked with that to get the skin tone that I was after. This is a little strong.
but definitely a little bit more color. Here's before, here's after. I didn't like what it was doing to her hair or any of the rest of the image, so I'm going to have to mask that out. So again, really quickly with the mask brushes at, with Edge Aware, my brush value, I'm going to keep it about 175 brush size. I can go up with hardness and take down a little flow. I'll keep all the way up and just come, oops, let me invert that. There we go. And come around the face and it's a little bit too strong for my liking, but you get the idea of how to do this very quickly without affecting the rest of the image in a negative way. All right, so we just enhanced the skin tone. Here's before, here's after. And I'm actually going to take that opacity down just a little for that layer to take down that skin tone. The great thing about Photo Effects Lab or working in a layered program like Photoshop, you're able to, after making these masks, then come in and even have more control over it. So I'm just going to go back up to maybe about 70%. Here's before, here's after. A little bit of an enhancement there. Now I'm going to see from stack to get all these layers to come together. And now we'll go into what I always, again, go into first, uh, Topaz Clean. So Topaz Clean, we'll open that up. And the great thing about Topaz Clean is even when you have natural spots such as freckles, it is not going to get rid of them. It's going to clean up areas of the skin and really flatten up and, and give some better um, texture to the skin, natural texture to the skin, without removing elements that really make somebody unique. So here's before again and after. Now this is a little strong for me for the skin, so what I would do on this if all I if I wanted to keep all of the um, tech or all of the all of her freckles, maybe come in and just take the strength down. Nope, that didn't work. I'll take that strength back up to two, and instead work with the texture. Take that texture down. Give me a little bit more natural. Actually, up. I'm sorry. Up is going to give you a heavier texture. I don't necessarily want heavier. I want to change the size. Excuse me. As you go up with the size, you'll start to notice that it brings back in even more elements of natural um, texture. The size is based in pixels. If you take your size way down, the texture is going to be very, very small, and then it's going to flatten out. As you take that texture up, you'll bring back in lots and lots of texture. So it's a very delicate balance trying to get the right effect. And then you have the boost. Boost will um, boost up that texture a little bit more and a little bit more. And let's go back to fit. So you're able to keep in certain elements that you want. Here's before, here's after, while still cleaning up the skin. And I might work with this um, in a little bit further in if I was doing this, because I would I want that texture to be a little bit more natural. However, I actually want to pretend like there is um, that maybe these are pimples or something. These are elements on our face that you want to get rid of because I love Simplify for this reason. The combination of Simplify and Clean for skin is great, especially if you're trying to get rid of something because as you can see, let's say I had, um, there was, you know, a blemish on her forehead. Clean is not going to necessarily get that color to go away. It's just going to clean up the photograph and kind of flatten out everything. It's not going to get the color to disappear. Well, let me cancel out of this, and instead let's go into Topaz Simplify, which is based on a completely different technology. Oh, and actually you're looking at Topaz Simplify 4. It is going to be released here in the next day or two. I'm really excited about it. It will be, of course, a free upgrade to all of you who already own Topaz Simplify, and we'll have a great intro discount on uh, Simplify as well. So I know there might be a lot of questions. This is just a beta version, though, but you can tell already what there used to be oh, not very many presets at all, I think 11 or something, and now we have over 100. So lots of fun stuff as it comes to artistic stuff a little kind of crazy for this picture, which is what we're trying to do. So let's go back into detail removal and enhancement, and I'm going to go to reset all, 
and let's go up one to one and look at the spots that were not eliminated within Topaz Clean. They're kind of the larger freckles on her face. I have this detail removal and enhancement set of presets that are going to come in Simplify 4, and they're specific more to spot removal on, let's say, uh, negatives, digital spots that you might have, digital dust or actual dust from scanning in old negatives, but it works really well with um, trying to remove spots from any sort of area because what it does is just use the Simplify technology and starts to, on a size-based level, remove certain areas. Now this will start to create a, an artistic effect so we don't necessarily want the entire image to look like this, just certain areas. So here's before, here's after. You can tell those spots still haven't left because they're pretty strong in color. So instead I'm going to go to my global adjustments and go into simplify and take that simplify size slider just a little bit further up until I see that these have started to blend in with the color of her skin. Okay, once they start blending in with the color, here's before, here's after, then we can go on now with the kind of workflow that I kind of enjoy for removing blemishes from skin. So I'm going to go back to fit. Okay, here's before, here's after. I've done a ton of other things to this image that I didn't want to do, and I definitely don't want an artistic effect necessarily, or a heavy artistic effect on this image. So within Simplify 4, we don't even have to get into anything else. We also have this local adjustment brush, and we have the brush out. So I'm going to go through that same step that I did with Adjust, and taking that brush size up, the opacity all the way up, the hardness pretty high, and no edge aware, and just brush out the effect completely out of the image and get the entire before image back. So you can tell again it just turned white now. We ha can't see that effect at all. I'm going to go back one to one and use my eraser slider. Take that opacity, leave it at one. The brush size, let's take that way down. Hardness, I'll take a little bit down. Edge aware, I don't need it to be edge aware at all. And watch what happens as I start clicking on some of these blemishes. But they're not blemishes, I get it. They're, um, <laughs> I know that they are freckles, but you know, some clients might, don't, might not want freckles either. So this is a good way just to eliminate those areas. So what's happening here is we are as you can see, I'm putting little black dots onto my mask over here, and I'm bringing in that simplify layer that's below it back in. So very quickly, I'm able to remove those areas that were a little too heavy for me in clean. and bring back in a natural color and you almost don't even notice it on the texture on her face but we're going to go back into clean now and actually bring back in a little bit better of texture. I'm also going to go across the her wrinkles just a little bit on her forehead and we're pretty much good to go. Let me show you before and after. Here's before. Oh wait, that was the entire one. Well, let me show you before and after in Photo Effects Lab. I'm going to kind of go quickly through this next step back in clean since we've already done it. And here's before on Photo Effects Lab first. And after Simplify. Again, before and after Simplify. It's a very quick process. And now I'm going to make another stack layer, get everything ready to go new layer to go into Topaz Clean. Now I can look at my skin even and now all of those freckles or ble blemishes if they were are no longer showing up. So that is a trick with Topaz Simplify and Clean for skin. So here I would probably take out a little bit of texture 
boost some of that, take the size up and get a little bit more of a natural texture. Right now her skin became very, very non-porous. <laughs> so I want to bring back in a little bit that of that. You can do that with the size slider. And within the same time, I'm going to now go into my, I wonder if I can take my, for a more natural effect, you can always take that strength down and then take that texture up and bring back um, or take that texture down to flatten out certain areas. But I am going to keep it at two. And then we're going to go directly into our accent and just work with the accents and lines within her eyelashes. So take that radius maybe. Uh, for this one, I like it a little bit up. Sharpness. Again, that sharpness slider is not going to affect the sharpness of anything other than your eyelashes or the edges, such as hair, anything like that. So here's before, here's after. You're able to keep the texture you want in the lips and the eyes and the edges. Again, here's before and after. Still have a natural type of skin without losing texture. Let me go ahead and say OK. Okay, so here's where we started. We enhanced the skin tone, took away fake blemishes or freckles. Here's before, here's after, and then enhanced the skin and the kept all of the edges together. I do have a couple other things I want to uh, show you with this particular workflow, but I am going to look at your questions right now. Douglas would like for me to show a demo saving layers as PFXL. He hasn't seen that yet. Sure. So if I wanted to possibly keep all of these layers, have a non-destructive workflow here, and I was working in a standalone mode, actually even when you're working in Lightroom, Aperture, or, or Photoshop for that matter, when it's as a plugin, you can still save a layered file, but you can only open that layered file as a standalone when using PhotoFX as a standalone. So here you would just go to Save As. And I'll go here to my portrait webinar and I'll save it as Save Portrait Layers. And within the drop down of the types, you'll see Projects. And that's a PFXL, which stands for Photo FX Lab. And it's going to be our own Topaz file format that we came up with. So you guys could have uh, the ability to save layers and work on projects after the fact. So press Save. It will go ahead and save it for you. Then if you get out of the image, you can go to File. If it's in your recent files, you can pull it up there. Or if you, you could also go to Open and, and navigate back to it. But it was the PortraitLayers.pfxl, so I can just open that right back on up and all of my layers and my masks are still there for me to continue working on, which I'm going to continue doing really quickly. I want to go ahead and do one more stamp layer and show you what I was talking about with Topaz Adjust to kind of have eyes whiten out and just give you that little extra something. A lot of you who have been to my previous webinars know that Photopop is one of my favorites and it really is one of my favorites on portrait images too, except it doesn't do very nice things to the skin either. So here's before and after just gives a nice little pop of color and detail, but the skin, again, not doing great. But it makes the eyes stand out much more, get quite a lot of enhancement without going over the top. And then, again, just brushing out and smoothing out that skin. I'm actually going to brush it out this time. I'll take that down, edge aware, take all the way up, take that opacity all the way up. And just brush out all of that extra shadow and detail that came in with that preset. So you see that happening on the skin. I'm just going down on the neck here, above her lip, on her nose, around her eyes, and between her eyes eyes and eyebrows, under the eyes, got to get everywhere because there's several different types of tone within her face and this is a very accurate edge aware brush within Photo Effects Lab. So let me just do a couple more little areas. Okay, almost got everything. All right, so I was able to do that very quickly. And 
now you can see with the local adjustment on, you see how it just kind of brought out a lot of contrast and uh, detail and light in her face that doesn't look as good as when it's more smooth and natural feeling. But then we got a lot of enhancement in the background without having any on her face. So that is, uh, I had several, again, several people ask me about that. All right, so now we are good. Let me go ahead and look at some other questions. Shane asks, how does the apply button work and adjust? Shane, the apply button, all of our programs, is going to apply the effect that you have and allow you to continue working on your workflow. Before, in something like, for example, Topaz Clean, which has not been updated to the latest type of interface of ours, does not have an apply button. So if I was working on just the eyes, for example, this would be a great program so I could work on just the eyes and enhance the eyes, press apply, then go in and work on the skin separately, press apply, then go and work on something else separately. That is why Adjust has that apply button, and black and white effects, lens effects, and the new uh, Simplify 4 will have that as well. So if I, in Simplify here, let's go to some presets that are just going to be really obvious. You can see your before image here is the before, what we brought in, after image is the, with the preset. If I press apply, now if I go to my before image, it's actually the same image. So it just kind of flattened the preset down onto the image. And it is something where you cannot undo. So you need to make sure that it is something that you want to apply in this workflow during um, your session in each plugin. But then you can come in and you could go somewhere else and continue working on a different area. This is really great for the local adjustments again. So let's say you wanted to do something on just the background, you painted out the foreground, then you could apply that, and then just the background is adjusted in your new image. And then you could come in and just work on the foreground, all within this program without having to actually have a layered program or have to exit the plugin and come back into your layers. Tommy asks, what is I Feel Lucky? Tommy, I Feel Lucky, what it does is it takes all of your sliders and randomly moves them around. And when we have so many sliders as we do within a lot, sometimes, you know, it's not something that will end up looking great. And it's real, really here for inspiration. So if you're, you know, not really being inspired by something and then all of a sudden you come to this and you say, wait a minute, this would look really good as a desaturated image. And I really want to come in here and now, you know, bring my, bring my color up or something along those lines. You can really play around with all of that. So it's basically just a fun tool. <laughs> uh, George asks, can you back up with the I Feel Lucky? Yes, you can, George. So if you come to a point, whoa. So you come to a point, you said, oh my gosh, that black and white image was kind of cool and I want to go back. All you have to do is press undo, and there you go. Now you have an artistic high-key black and white image. Jason says, Nicole, do you always do your workflow in FX Lab and in Topaz, or do you ever do masking in Photoshop? I usually create diff versions in Topaz and other plugins and blend them in Photoshop with masks and blending modes. Everyone has their own workflow. Jason, um, no, I don't always use uh, FX Lab as my host. It is new to us here, so I have been, because it is, you know, something that I need to get really familiar with and uh, continue working with, I use it now as my host quite a bit, and one thing I'm finding is I'm not missing much, which is kind of cool, but of course, photos, this is not a replacement for Photoshop by any means. Photoshop is just a huge program that has so much more than Photo Effects Lab will ever want or, or need to put in. This is really a Topaz Hub and an effects workflow. So the layered program, the layered stuff here is, is really good for several different reasons. Um, not only because the mass and you can come in and do certain things there, but you can also, when you're working with, let's say, your Instatone, I'm going to say from stack and get a new image here, and you want to add tone to your image, say from, uh, Let's say I liked this type of tone. Basically, I just clicked on this first image in the 500 pix library, and it applied the same colors into my image. And this might be something that inspires me, but it's not exactly what I want it to be, but I want to play with it. So I'll apply it to my layer, and then I can work with my blending modes here 
and say, what if I just do more of an overlay or a soft light on this and take the opacity down, and now I have a completely different tone to my image, and it doesn't have to be like this thumbnail was in this upper left-hand corner. So there are certain reasons that a lot of these elements were added in. Also within Photo Effects Lab, a lot of reasons that we have the layers palette here is for our Lightroom, Aperture, and iPhoto users who don't also use photo, Photoshop. Because somebody who buys our bundle, they'll get Topaz Remask, and if they don't have a layered program, they were never able to use it because Remask has a different compatibility. It has to have layers to, to, to work. So this is really great for those um, users of Topaz. And there is a benefit as far as speed goes when opening up plugins. It's just an immediate thing within uh, Photo Effects Lab, whereas when in all other hosts, it's quite a bit longer to open up. And then you also have all of your effects in here from all of your plugins. But like you said, everyone has their own workflow. And I've been telling people definitely, especially with Photo Effects Lab, to try it before you buy it. Because you might find that it's not something that's necessarily beneficial to you. Because you do have, especially if you're a Photoshop user, a lot of these elements are already there. Now for people who like a more simplified type of workflow, which I do in a lot of cases, this is a great thing because you just have all the tools right there that you need. Uh, Barbara says, are you able to show masking a different background? Barbara, I can. I mean, I do find that people will maybe need that for portrait imagery. A lot of portrait images are taken in the studio and then are masked in, or maybe you are just don't have that good of a background. So this would be actually a great image to, to try out with Remask because we have a lot of fur going on here. We have some wispy hair. And so I think it can really show off Remask. Ooh, that's an interesting. Oh, that's because I have this down here. Okay, let's open up this original. Okay. So within Remask, it's very easy to do a quick mask, so I'll, go, I'll be happy to show you. I'm just going to make a duplicate layer, open up Remask, and if you're not aware of Remask, it is based on a TriMap technology, so you're going to have three different colors. Uh, one is green, which is for keep, one is for um, cut and that's going to be red and then this blue color that I'm using right here is the compute and you can tell I'm making a really big line around her head this is because she has some of these wispy hairs coming off and this is going to be the key difference in what is going to make replacing a background for a portrait image realistic versus unrealistic because if you eliminate all of the natural kind of things that would happen, uh, such as wispy hairs or, uh, you know, fur on a coat like this, it's going to be really obvious that she replaced it. So I want to make sure that I put the compute brush on all those areas where I still need it to compute, and then we'll work from there. So let me go ahead and now take my red fill bucket and put that into the background. And I'm going to go ahead and do one real quick single color selection type of adjustments. The single color selection is great because you press that brush I'm over here on the left hand side, single color selection, and your cursor will turn into an eyedropper where you can click on the color that you want to keep, and I want to keep her hair. So I'm going to click on that, and I'm actually going to take my color range up a little bit to about 20. This takes the range of this little color swatch we just got from her hair, takes the range of pigment the, on this, each side of this color and takes that up a little bit. So it can really help there. Now I'm just going to take my brush size up and go around her head a little. And it's just going to help with the hair, which is going to be important for the program to know, hey, I want to keep this. So that's good. I'll go ahead and keep her face. There we go. And even her ear. Okay. Just doing a couple quick adjustments here so we just tell the program a little bit more information about what we're supposed to keep and what we're supposed to take away. I 
And this is just my workflow when it comes to more wispy types of things like this. Other people have come up with some really interesting workflows of their own. So it's whatever, really Remas just takes practice in getting to know it. I can't tell you how many people have said, wait a minute, it looks so much easier when you do it <laughs> on the webinar. I'm like, well, I'm also a little bit more quick at it. I've, I, I, I practice with it all the time um, to create images and that really helps as well. I can tell as I went around the edges here, I actually got some of my fur coat, so I'm going to stop that and then come in here. I'm not sure if I'm eliminating too much, honestly, of her hair, so I'll leave that alone. And I'm just going to say compute mask. Ooh, I should have gotten a little bit more. So the compute mask is here now, and you can tell it definitely has some issues going on because the background does go along with our hair. So let's take a look at what we do have, and that's the keep. So it actually doesn't look too bad. The mask itself looks a little bit worse than the keep area does. It did a pretty good job automatically of keeping her, her wispy hair. If we take a look at it a little bit closer, you can see over here on the right, it did a pretty good job, um, just straight off without having any sort of extra computation. But one thing that I'm going to do is come down to my recovery slider, which in portrait images with hair is going to be your very, very, very best friend. I did not resize this image beforehand, so it does take a little bit longer for the processing to occur when you click the high quality recovery. Usually just in regular images, the recovery slider at its normal quality will be great. What it's going to do, it's going to separate the foreground from the background. It's going to try to figure out what is the foreground, what is the background, I'm going to, and it's going to just make it really pop, stand out, and really get it all. When you're at high quality, it does it even better, but it's slow. That's why we put slow right here. So. It's whether or not you need it. If you don't need it, don't use it because it's pretty slow. Okay, now I'm going to take that recovery slider all the way up. Good thing about it is once you do that first processing, you don't have to do it again. All right, so while it got a lot of my extra hair, here's where the issue came in with the background is now being seen. So here's before and after. But look at what it does over here on the right. It's just really nice. It brings back all those edges that it took away. So now I'm just going to do 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 a couple little more things to clean this up a little bit. I'd like to look at my tri map actually. One way to clean it up is just to come along these edges and click and you'll just see it starts to fill in. Because This is a pretty big line. You want the line to be as small as possible uh, as far as the compute line, but when you have these kind of wispy hairs it does start to make it difficult to get a small line, but that's okay because you can figure it out. So I'm not going to go through this whole thing. I'd never masked this image before. The background does blend in a little bit with our hair, a little bit too much than I'd like, but let's try this one thing here. Okay, take my color range down. Let's see what happens when I do that. Brush size up. That took away a little too much of the wispiness. So this would be a one that I'd have to work with for a while, but you get the idea. I hope that gives you an idea of how to at least use the remask as a tool. And then you can come in and, and replace the background. I'm not going to fix this right now just because I probably don't have the time. So let me just say OK get it back into Photo Effects Lab and you can see the cutout and then you would just bring in a new background so we'll bring in something from file you can say layer new from image and it'll take you into your navigation windows and then you can just pull up an image let's just go to a big stockpile of images that we have here This obviously is not going to look super great, but you'll get the idea. You bring that image in. Let's say she's in an airport now. <laughs> Let me just go up to this move tool or the scale tool first. I'll scale this up. 
then I would do some more blending options within everything and would have worked a little bit harder on that mask if I had the time. It's probably at least a 10 minute mask, but you get the idea. I hope that helps in your workflow process. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me here today and we'll be talking to you soon. Bye-bye.